Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and welcome to Flossmas Day 6. This is the 6th of December. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. I've had a very busy weekend. Um, I think I've told you we've been decorating and uh, going to the beach and I finally managed to get the chart of Mary Small uploaded to my Etsy store. More about that in a minute, I'll tell you about that in a minute. What I thought I'd do today is to start off with a little festive Welsh lesson. So I had an email from a lady called Helen who was asking about something that I'd said in one of the earlier Flossmases. And what I'd done was I'd been holding up this freebie chart, which is Mr. and Mrs. Christmas. And I said, oh, this is the most important person this time of year. And then I thought, well, really, no, we can't have Father Christmas as the most important person this time of year. And I started talking about Baba Yessi. And what I perhaps didn't clarify is that in my little aside, I then started talking about the baby Jesus, who perhaps we should really say uh, is the most important person for this time of year. So let's start then. So Merry Christmas is Nadoleg Llawen. So I'll put it across the bottom there so you can uh, wish people that you know Nadoleg Llawen, which is Merry Christmas. Uh, Baba Yesi is the baby Jesus and Father Christmas, let's get the right one, Father Christmas is Sean Corn. So that is your festive festive Welsh lesson for, for today. There might be more, there might be more, but um, just for today we'll stick, we'll stick with those three. Small steps, small steps for me particularly. Right, some stitching. I've got a couple of past finishes. I've got freebies, I've got the advent calendar. And then that should be enough for today, really, I think. Thanks to all those people who've sent me um, suggestions of other people who are doing Vlogmas or Flossmas. I've started trying to make my way through, through some of those. So I'll let you know who I've been watching later on in the week. Although I've got a feeling this week is going to be particularly busy at school. Just finally, I won't mention her again, I promise. Mary Small is now in my Etsy store. Finally, finally, it seems to have taken me ages to get everything finished up for Mary. Um, and it was a big, big push today because Etsy and I had very different ideas about how the upload should go. <laughs> but there we go. It's all there now and, and ready to go. So let me just give you a little bit of Mary's background. I've told you some of the things about her, but not necessarily everything. And let me show you what you get if you decide to go for the chart. So this is Mary and you get a little bit of information that I've managed to research about Mary with thanks to Rebecca from Hedgerow Stitching and Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery who both initially pointed me in the right direction. Um, and Rebecca's given me a little bit more information about um, her father and I'll come to that bit in a minute. So uh, Mary A.G. Small is Mary Amelia Graham Small and she was born, uh, did, uh, where are we? Where did I actually write it down? There we go. In 1858 in India. Um, so she was out in India, or her, fa her parents were out in India, because her father was a surgeon in the Bengal Medical Services. So he trained in Edinburgh and then gone out as an assistant surgeon to, um, to India and then became a surgeon in India. Uh, she had two older sisters who were born out in India as well. Uh, Isabella Margaret S. Small, I can't find out what the other S is, and it's really annoying, and Lila's Catherine Small, who were both um, who were both born in India. Now, Isabella is on the record is being is down as being born in Rajputana, and I'll put the spelling of that across the bottom, Rajputana. And so I'm guessing that that's probably where Lila's and, and Mary were born as well, but um, I'm not 100%. Um, and then the family came back to uh, East Weems, actually, and they spent a bit of time in East Weems. And then they had three, three other children. So there we go. There we had three other children um, actually down in the south. So there was another sister, Mer uh, Ellen Harriet, and then two further brothers, David Henry and George Wyatt Oswald. 
And then the next we hear of Mary is she's out in Australia um, in 1890 and she's giving birth to a baby girl called uh, Isabel Mary Gordon Powell and has also two other children, David Henry Gordon Powell and Stanley Gordon Powell. Now Stanley's actually born back in England and there's no sign of her husband, Frederick. He uh, actually dies out in Australia in 1935, but she comes back to the UK in uh, 1900 and actually has uh, Stanley back in the UK. And then by the 1901 census is uh, living back in East Weems. And then finally, she finishes up her days at a grand old age of 93 in Wolverhampton. So she did have quite the life, quite the life did our little Mary. So I hope you could find a little spot for Mary. She's not very big. She really isn't very big at all. And she's a pleasure to sit, especially this time of year with the um, with those colours. It comes with a really nice big clear chart and all the information that you need for threads and various different fabrics. So that's it, that's it for Mary. I promise I won't mention her again. You've probably seen her and heard her enough now. Right, let's go back and see what I've actually managed to stitch today. And it is a poultry amount. I decided to try and finish up um, Let It Snow by Whilst Iris Naps, who was one of the freebies that I showed earlier uh, in this Flossmas and literally oh it's gonna really blow out there we go you can just see i've started to put some of the snowflakes on and it is much much more visible in real life i dyed the fabric myself and the chart that is uh, isabel who's isabel the chart that <laughs> christina has designed is actually a double-sided pillow so stitching on the front and the back. So it's the date on the back with a few snowflakes. And I don't think I've ever done a pillow that's got a stitch back. I'm just kind of looking past the camera now to some of my pillows that are still sat over there. And I don't think I've ever done a pillow that's got a stitched back. So I think I will actually stitch the reverse as well, the 2021, and put it on there. Now I'm having to make up my snowflakes a little bit because when I went back to the chart today, I realized that the, the T there should be where the eye is so the eye should be there and the tea should be further over and then snow should be further over still i'm not unpicking it i will just fudge my way through and i'll have a nice little pillow which says let it snow and you'll never know the difference nobody will know they'll never know we just have to fudge it sometimes don't we bury the bodies and move on i think it was betsy clager that said that and i was like that is a genius saying bury the bodies and move on. Right, a couple of finishes from me that I finished this year. The first one actually is uh, pretty good because I've just taken it off my mantelpiece. Now I had very very highfalutin design, uh, ideas this year of having one of these for each and every season. Well let me tell you the spring one has sat on my mantel all year <laughs> and it's this one. Welcome Spring by the drawn thread. Now I bought this as a kit from um, Chris at the Nimble Thimble when I went there. Oh, it's got to be a year ago. In fact, it might actually be actually a year ago. I think I went up right at the end of November or early December last year. And trying to get as little, well, I'm trying to do two things. One, as little glare as possible. Two, as little reflection of the general kind of destruction of this room at the moment. <laughs> so there is welcome spring i have actually doing a terrible job there i have actually stitched pretty much welcome summer so i just need to get that one finished off and i had to put it on my list of things to try and finish off in december as i'm trying to finish off a few things so you'll never you never know you might actually see that as a finish this december and this is a frame that i got from scalf frames uh, in part of their made to measure section. I thought I'd actually ordered it so it fitted a bit closer. It was more of a, you know, an even frame all the way around, but I didn't, I messed up the, uh, messed up the sizing. <laughs> so it, it ended up looking like this and I don't dislike it actually. 
I don't dislike it. So when I order for Welcome Summer, I'll probably order the same size and do the same thing again. But the kit is fabulous. It comes with all the silks to do the to do the stitch and it's really reasonably priced I think if you imagine how much it would cost you to actually buy all the silks in order to do that you'd have loads left over and then with that you've just got just what you need and it's, it's brilliantly priced and the second thing that I finished stitching when I was looking back through my finishes was this and this is going to really blow out all of a sudden so this is Winter ABCs by Little House Needleworks. And when I looked back through my finishes list, it said Winter ABCs, Little House Needleworks. I was like, what is that? I don't remember doing that. And I was trying to think of like the small square um, houses that Little House Needleworks do. And I could not think, could not think. And I was like, oh, it's the big long one. So it's stitched. There we go. I'll try and bring it up like that on faience grey 28 count i definitely used sulky white and then i just used a red and a green and a grey so yeah i just kind of i just kind of made my own colors and it's backed with a little bit of gingham and it hangs on this pair of victorian doorknobs just as a little hanger and it sits on the corner of my um of my bookshelf so yeah i finished that one up as well i really enjoyed stitching that actually really enjoyed stitching it i have got all four to do i think i'm gonna do winter obviously is on the faience gray and i think i decided that i was gonna do spring in the faience gray as well and then i've got mushroom uh, mushroom nagana for summer and autumn because I think the colours will suit it better so I just wanted to kind of have a fabric that looked nice all together but, but suited the stitches freebie freebie today literally again came through today I think seriously the designers know about vlogmas and they're just uh, producing all the freebies that I need so far I haven't really had to go hunting terribly hard for them and this is a beautiful one by Stone Street Stitchworks and it's called First Snow and it's this lovely little house in the middle and look at that border sorry everything's really blowing out tonight i really like that that could be a really nice quick little stitch and i said i'm trying i'm gonna try not to just sort of uh, <laughs> stitch oh i've just kept camera sorry stitch all the freebies up i'm gonna try and get a few things finished off but that is really really beautiful I've actually got a week's Dye Works Dolphin, which is that colour there. I'm going the wrong way. There, <laughs> that colour there. And uh, that might look very nice on that. Oh, it's almost like a red rag to a bull if I work out kind of what fabric I think I might want to do it on. And if I think about it too much, I'll end up doing it. You never know. Right, two little advent calendars. And... I've had a couple of people saying that they're pleased that I'm leaving the patchwork one right to the very end because there have been a few differences so um, it's been interesting there are some people who have got the calendar and still don't want to know just in case theirs is different. I uh, I didn't get to try my Philip Kingsley elasticizer this morning in the shower because I read the instructions and it required a 15 to 20 minute um, kind of with a shower cap on sitting there and I was like well I've not got time for that today <laughs> that's not happening today so we'll leave that for another day oh perfect 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 this time sorry I should have shown you the box is me just randomly unwrapping unwrapping things <laughs> and this time it is an ultra sun SPF 30 now we go through this like nobody's business in our house has anybody ever kept a lip balm right to the end I've done it with one when I was about, in fact, it even came up in a Facebook memory. When I was about <laughs> 32, I had a Clinique one. And it's the only thing like this I've ever managed to keep in my possession right till the very end. I normally lose them halfway through and then find them again somewhere and lose them again. Transitory things, those are. But yeah, I shall try my best with that one. And this one, number six. Now, this is interesting. 
because this is a little bit thicker. This is a little bit thicker than, than what it's been so far. Ooh. Ooh. So what we've got here is Advent Trim Collection for the Patchwork Rabbit by Cauldron. So uh, Info Dames of the Needle. So that's the info on the front. And then there's the trims in the back. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So we've got 18 inches of each one. So we've got a little bit whoops, of mini Rick Rack. We have got some beautiful dark red pom-poms. And we have got some thin mustard chenille. So that'll be fun for some finishes. So Shakespeare's Primitive Red Pom-Pom which is that one. Then we've got Honey Whiskey Chenille, which is this one. And then we've got Boxing Day Quarter Inch Rick Rack. Rick Rack. So there we go. They'd be really nice all together. And that's it from me today. I will see you tomorrow. Stay classy, Stitchers.